Wow. 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 <laughs> the production value for this game, excellent. It doesn't get any better. I mean, just look at it. Everything is so detailed. The, the graphics and small things in the background. and uh, Visually, this game is stunning. But this is good as well. Welcome to Takas Reviews. Today, I'll talk, be talking about Scythe. This game had a Kickstarter campaign going on, and it really took off, really. Uh, and just look at it, it's so visually stunning that you really can't ignore it, right? So, of course, uh, the visual itself isn't the only reason, because Stone Mario Games is behind this, and they have uh, Viticulture and Euphoria, two of the games I've played, and they are great, even though I haven't played Viticulture that much. I still enjoy the company and I love the production value they bring to the games and they deliver as well and with the treasure chest as well I knew that this components here will be awesome. So uh, the visuals in this game is 10 out of 10, no doubt, 10 out of 10. So the game itself, is it any good? Well, I'm here to help you find out, I hope. Hello. The game for this episode was brought to you by my Patreon supporters. So thank you a million to my Patreon supporters and I really hope you're gonna look at my Patreon account and see how you, also you can help me with the project and vote the next game I'm going to review. So Scythe was this uh, month's uh, game and of course I really would like to have this game reviewed as well. So yay, win-win. Okay, thanks again. So, what you see behind me here is the Kickstarter version. Yeah, I backed it in Kickstarter and I have everything that it was with there, with the stretch goals and all. So what you see here is not what you will get if you buy the product now in the stores. You won't get the special resource tokens, which I have here, but you can get those by upgrading them on the, the Stone Mario website afterwards. And also, you can upgrade the size of the board. You see the small board now, the standard board behind me, so it's, it's good enough. But you can even make it bigger, and I love playing it bigger because Things really take a lot of space on the tiles here. For instance, these, these mechs here, they are quite uh, substantial when it comes to size. And they cover a lot of the hexes when you put them on the map. And if you have more multiple of them on the same hex, you will notice that uh, they become kind of crammed, you know, it's tight. So you want to have the big board, also you get the more epic feeling with the big board, of course. Uh, and also you, you won't get the metal coins, which I have here, but otherwise the game will be more or less the same, I think. Uh, but one thing is very nice, are these here. These you'll get as a, a normal copy, especially these tiles. Uh, these tiles here will be different for each player. Uh, and if you look carefully, there are small indentations here to keep the tokens. So, if I take a token here and place it on so, you see I have, oh, oh, I see I have the board on, a, on an angle now, so the token will stay on the board. So, of course, you now have, have this much uh, uh, inclination uh, playing the board game, so it really keeps all the pieces at its, its bay. Very nice to have, uh, and it's so accurate as well for the background. And Speaking of background, just look at it, all the details. And then you have this one. This is also a unique background, and this is one of the factions in the game, one of the five factions. So, you see here, you have these special abilities here, it's unique for each faction, except for this one, and a unique ability there as well. So, the attention to detail in this game, as I mentioned, is amazing, and uh, yeah, let's see how it plays actually, okay? At first glance, this game might seem like a war game. And yeah, there is fighting in the game, but fighting is not the essential thing, it's not central in this game. You have fighting to uh, shoo away enemies and to gain a, a couple of stars, but fighting is not focus. Uh, the most focus here is to have uh, the correct resource management, to build your engine correctly by using this board here, because all these bits here represent actions. and. During the game, your actions will become more and more powerful, and you get to do more and 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 uh, more with more strength behind it. So you really have a resource management game here with uh, area control. You have to position yourself to stop the enemy from getting behind you and getting through you, and just securing those points uh, as best as you can. 
and still you want to explore, you want to stop the enemy while they try to stop you as well. But you really don't want that much fighting because fighting can be hurtful, especially if you fight a lot because you, you use you spend resources fighting. But how do we win this game? Uh, to explain that, I'm going to tell you how to win the game first, what it's about, and then I'm going to go through these actions here to see uh, how the game actually plays, because it's really, really simple. Here you see a scale, and this is the popularity track. So the higher up you are, the more popular you are. And at the end of the game, if you are up here on popularity, you will get more points than the persons below you on the on the scale here. So these points give you this will give you points based on uh, certain things like uh, the number of squares you have control over how many resources you have control over and for each star you have here and what when one player places his sixth star here the game ends like that stop 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 well well is it, it is kind of dramatic because you have no uh, chance to oh I need to do one more thing before all oh, no, it's over okay so even by yourself, uh, when you you are the one placing six star, do I want to place a six star now? Because if I do so, I might not win. But then he might place a six star, and then he gets more points than he has now. So ugh, yeah, the choices. But to get a star here, you need to complete certain requirements, so such as uh, upgrading everything you can on your home uh, sheet, or placing out all your mechs. These are the mechs. Or getting four recruits will help you, uh, will benefit you based on your neighbor's actions, which is good. Uh, put out all your workers, uh, complete a secret mission, uh, win one or two fights, not three or four or five, but one or two. Then shalt thou count to three. Uh, have the highest, get up to 18 on popularity, or up to 16 on military strength. These are multiple ways of getting a star here. And the more stars here you have, the better, of course, because each of these might be worth three, four, or five points, depending on how popular you are. So let's go to the actions of the game. So this is the action board. You start the game with your faction board, like this, uh, with unique abilities, and you combine this with this sheet here, which is your resources. And here you have engineering. So all of these are different as well. As you can see with the red one here, you have different uh, resources and also different placement here. For instance, you have here produce with upgrade, and on the red one, you don't have produce, you have move with upgrade. And the cost is also different. Here we have two oil barrels versus three oil barrels. We only get one gold, but two gold. So very different uh, rewards and uh, cost costs of these boards. And it makes it very, very varied every time you play it. But all of these boards are divided into four columns, you see? And each column here is an action you can take. So this will uh, be placed on the action I wanted to take. So let's say I place it here. Now, if it was my turn again now, and this token was there, that means I cannot use this action again. I have to take this, this, or this action. So you can't do tw two actions in a row, the two same actions in a row. But when you do one action, you do what you do, and you wait for your turn again. So it's very fast. So let's go through this here. Uh, when I place it on a column, I can do uh, one action or two actions. I can take the top one or the bottom one, or both. If you take both, I take the top one first, then the bottom one. So here, I just produce on the hexes where I have workers. And you get as many resources as you have workers on those hexes. Very simple. And then here I can pay. Everything, everything in red is pay, and green is income. So I can pay three oil barrels if I have that, and upgrade. I'm going to take an upgrade action, I get any of these tokens here, and can move it downstairs. So let's say, here, I take produce. That means next time I produce, I produce on three hexes instead of two. And I can put it down maybe here, to make it cheaper to buy a mech in the future. From four iron to three iron. Very handy. And then you have this one, you can take it away. You can pay a gold to trade, you get any two resources you want and maybe a power if you have build a building. You pay here and you deploy a mech. Very simple. And here you can get more military power by paying gold or a combat card. And here you can also gain popularity, by the way. But if you have built this building, you also gain a popularity point. And then if you have or want to, you can pay three wood to build a building. And then you just take any of the four buildings here and place it on the board. Simple. You also gain three money. And then we have here, move, you have two uh, squares, you see. That means you can activate two different figures and move them accordingly. So do that, or take a money. 
then I pay him for food, and I kind of enlist. And enlist, you take one of these circles here, like this one. And when I do that, that means in the future, if one of my neighbors, my closest neighbors, ever do a build action, I gain a popularity point. So I will benefit on my neighbor's actions. So if you have all this stuff here, you can get power, coins, popularity, and combat cards by doing so. So you can benefit from your neighbor's actions, which is very nice. The game comes with this here sheet. This is an achievements sheet. So yeah, don't, don't laugh. It's actually quite fun. Uh, it's two-sided. I'm not going to show the other side because of the names. Uh, and these will give you achievements based on your performance. So the winners will be able to write their names here depending on what faction they're playing. And uh, did I win without any buildings? Did I win without any mechs? Did I win with any points? Uh, or the one that I have is to place a sixth star ending the game and not win. So there's one achievement for the non-winner as well. But uh, putting down the name here it really makes it permanent and you want to think differently in the future. Okay, so uh, Tage here, he was the uh, first winner with six or less popularity and he played Polania. So next time he may, might try to go with the same strategy and try to get his name here on the other factions maybe. So you have to hurry to get your name on the sheet. Um, and yeah, it's kind of an incentive to try and think it differently and I really like it as well. So all the actions are very simple, and playing the game is very simple as well. Uh, when you move, just move a figure, like so, or so. So in the beginning you have maybe two moves, and you have two workers and your hero. You can move the hero and one worker. That's it, or two workers, one space. Very little. But once you get the mechs on board, then you notice, aha, the mech has a great capacity. He can take all the workers at the same time. Come on guys, I'm taking you with to the next area, and drop them off, and they can move from there again. So with the max you have a great method of transport and you can also take all the resources with you and all the workers with you that you want to carry and drop them off on the way. So it makes a totally different game when you get the max on board. So if you play without the max you will notice it's hard because other max can just come in and stop you and take away, chase away your workers. But there are so many small things in this game which are fascinating. Uh, buildings uh, on the map aren't really crucial to where they are. Well, the mill will produce the hex where it's on, and the mine will let you travel maybe easier from the home port. I don't think it's useful to have the mine long away from your home home port or uh, homeland. But these cards here, which are randomly chosen, one of five, will tell you that if you build buildings in a certain positions on the mob board, you will get points for that as well. So these are incentives to get your buildings out there and just have it, instead of having it at home. And then you have the heroes who can go on the board and go on an adventure, like Bilbo Baggins. Well, you can go here, and oh, look here, I'm drawing a card. And on the card, you see a beautiful illustration and some choices. So normally in games we have exploration, you have a small description of what happens, what you meet and something. Not here, only a picture. So the rulebook says to show this to everybody on the, uh, on the table, and uh, it really doesn't work. But what does work is for, ha for having that person to tell everybody else what they're seeing and describing it. Uh, because the choices here are often <laughs> always related to the image. So here we have a mech in the background with a tiger and a soldier next to the tiger coming towards uh, a woman herding some pigs. And you can repair the broken fence. Oh, there was a broken fence there. Nice. Details. You can disassemble the mech in the background for spare parts. Okay, so it was ruined. We're going to startle the pigs to start a stampede. All this action will give you some benefits, but often they also give you cost you something depending on the reward. But these cards are very useful and they're very pretty. Just look at some of these samples here. Gorgeous graphics for all of them and the attention to detail is astounding. I, yeah, so visually 10 out of 10 as I said. No, I have no problems against this game with the visuals. There are so many small things in this game which really makes it shine, and yeah, I won't go through them all. Like, if you attack someone and they have a lot of workers there, you chase them away and you lose popularity because you chased away a lot of innocent workers and everybody knows about this, so you lose popularity and maybe you shouldn't attack that. So you can actually use a lot of workers, non-combated workers, workers to defend yourself because if you, if you are attacked, they, your opponent will lose popularity, and popularity gives you points at the end of the game. So, of course, you don't want to lose popularity, but maybe you should anyway, because he has a good area. 
And if you go to the center here, you can get a fifth action column here next to your board where you can utilize and move very fast with your uh, mechs or heroes. Uh, well, just the attention to detail in this game is wow. Well, as I mentioned, combat is not very central to this game, but combat will happen, of course. And when you do combat, it's very simple. You have the power track here, which indicates how much military power you have uh, available. But it's only 16 at the maximum. And when you fight, you can only spend max 7 out of those uh, 16. So both players will do this hidden. You see it's a nice backside. And you can also play a card, a combat card. And these have values of 1 to 5. So it's hard to get those unless you actually actively go in to get them, and it's nice to have. So by playing a card, you don't have to show that until you both at the same time reveal this. Aha, you played the card. A 7 and a 3, so a 10. And the winner uh, is the one with the most value, of course. Uh, and ties are even won by the one who attacks, which is nice. So it really incentivizes an attack, and when this is done, the combat is over. Yeah, simple. The loser goes away, goes back home, and the winner gets resources, and maybe a star here as well. But this combat system really has an element of uh, bluffing or maybe uh, bluffing, <laughs> not bluffing, but uh, taking a chance. Uh, because let's say you're attacking somewhere with a lot of workers on it, so you, you lose popularity. Are you willing to spend a lot of power as well to lose power and popularity if you win? And if not, how much are you willing to spend? And you can speculate on this and think out, uh, on the enemy. Huh, I think he knows this about me, so I'm going to use zero of my actual power and add three. So you reveal three in total, and he reveals thir 13. Oh, okay, overkill. So, well, you lost, but <laughs> he just spent seven out of his uh, normal power plus a, a five card. And yeah, you actually won by doing that, right? So there's so many elements in this game which are so great. I, and the combat is one of them. That scythe, in a nutshell, um, there are many elements in this game. Many, many, many elements. But having so many elements really can be a bad thing, right? You have too many options, too much going on at the same time. Well, this game has obvious signs of being really heavily developed. Yeah, and being developed is a great thing because it means they have thought through everything from the minor actions and uh, how they can interact with the other actions and everything just fits really nice together. So I really enjoy playing this game and the game plays extremely well from all player counts from one to five. Yeah, even one player. You have an AI deck with special actions depending on your difficulty. You can choose a difficulty and it is almost like playing against a human opponent because things will be moved on the board uh, and you have combat which is exciting because you don't know uh, how the enemy is going to think because it doesn't think you just flip a card and see how it combats and many aspects of the game is the same by playing solo as playing multiple because you have a lot of interaction with solo players as well and you have to watch out for potential combat situations uh, both in both directions and combat is as i said very quick and fun and it's very it's easy to choose a number and a card based on the situation on the board so Playing this game for the first time is, of course, it, you have no idea what you're doing. So, the game comes with a small handout here which tells you this is what you do on turn 1, and turn 2, turn 3, turn 4, and turn 5, and then you're on your own. And this says, yeah, just take one action that uh, no one else has done. Okay, so you do that and you see what happens. But there is one thing uh, that is really hard to get into in this game, and that uh, is the movement. You have rivers here, which you normally can't cross, but each faction has an option for the mechs to cross the rivers. And they are very specific on the rivers. For instance, red here, you can move uh, two cornfields over two cornfields and over the river to village, the meeple fields here. So you can go back and forth here. That means you can go from, from this area to this area, and from this to this. And from this to this, you can go into both areas as well, actually. But yellow can't do that. No, he can only go to, let's see, oil fields and corn. So he can go in here, but he can't go in anywhere else. So you're safe from him. So you have all of these to, to manage. And okay, you have a handout here, a player aid, which tells how each faction can move. But it doesn't really help you. You're going to look at the map and visualize how they can move because it's so 
illogical. It's just, okay, you can move here. What can you move? I'm safe there. Oh, okay, I'm safe. And then you have the blue player who comes in and, oh, I didn't think about that one. So uh, that is hard for me uh, still to grasp and just visualize how they can move. But usually it's uh, getting a view of the board. Can they move here? Can they move here? Who can move in here? Nobody. Okay, so these are safe. Who can move here? And then when it's done, I just put it aside and do something else. So everything here makes sense uh, from the actions and how we interact with each other and how the game flows. And yeah, it supports up to five players. And of course, the more players you have, the longer game it will take. But Actually, the game length is not that uh, hard as well. Usually with four players, play well under two hours, and with five players, two hours or more. So, even with learning game, and yeah, and two hours-ish uh, uh, for four or five players, that is not bad at all for such a game as this. And it's so visually stunning, and every th decision you do is meaningful. So, I, I really can't recommend this game enough. It is an awesome game, and I really do enjoy it. I have one concern though, and that is replayability. Okay, you have the uh, you can mix and match between the factions and the uh, the type of culture you have, but uh, and you also have these special secret missions. But other than that, the game isn't really that varied. So I'm just concerned that some strategies will become. Uh, the best strategy. Uh, like, if you have this combination, okay, I do this. If you have this combination, okay, do this. So that's my uh, really one concern about this game, is if it's going to be too sterile and there will be a solution to the game. But other than that, if no one finds it, or I'm not gonna look anyway, this game is gorgeous. Yeah, this is my favorite Euro-ish game at the moment, uh, so yeah. Go buy it, it's excellent. Okay, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you had a great time, and I hope to see you again in the next episode. See ya! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.